Hello, welcome to Cinema Savvy and welcome to a brand new movie review. I'm Chris Garner, here today to give my review on Hacksaw Ridge, which is the 2016 biographical war drama directed by Mel Gibson, starring Andrew Garfield, Vince Vaughn, Hugo Weaving and Sam Worthington. I actually saw this movie when it originally came out, which is probably a couple of weeks ago now, two or three weeks ago. I had a little break from the movie reviews, but I'm getting back into them now and uh, this is one that I absolutely had to talk about. So the plot to Hacksaw Ridge, for anyone who doesn't know, is based on the real life events of Desmond Dunn who was the first conscientious objector to be awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor in the Battle of Okinawa. Um, I don't know if conscientious objector is the right word for it. I think he says something in the film similar to this as well, where he says something along the lines of, I willingly want to fight, but I just don't want to take another man's life. He's very religious, um, he's a medic, and he goes into combat without firing a single shot. This film has been nominated for six Academy Awards, which is absolutely incredible, including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor for Andrew Garfield, Best film editing, sound editing, and sound mixing as well. So it's great that this movie has been nominated for a lot of awards this year. And what excited me about this movie the most was the fact that this is Mel Gibson's return to directing after a 10 year hiatus. He is absolutely one of my favourite directors. This is actually his fifth movie. Um, in terms of his filmography, the only film I haven't seen of his is The Man Without a Face, which was his 93 movie. Um, but everything he brought out after that is incredible. Um, Braveheart, Passion of the Christ, Apocalypto. Love all three of those films. And I loved because they were historical epics with like The Passion of the Christ, for example, and Apocalypto, he wouldn't be afraid to use the actual dialect that would be used at that that time. Really appreciated him as a filmmaker. I thought his films were absolutely incredible and Braveheart is in my top 10 of my favourite films of all time. To me that film is absolutely just cinematic perfection beginning to end. So I've always marvelled his skills in directing and even acting as well. I think Mel Gibson's an incredible actor and I really do hope that the level of attention that this movie is getting and the positive reviews really do help him to make a comeback because taking his personal life out of the equation, whatever you think of the man, uh, in my opinion, is a fantastic actor and even better director. So I like that he's finally getting back into this and I look forward to all of his other films that come out after this one. So before I saw this movie, because it came out in America before we got it over here in the UK, which was horrendous because this was one of my most anticipated films. So I know technically it's a 2017 movie for us, but it did actually come out in 2016. So the wait until this film was just palpable for me because I couldn't wait to see this film, especially on the big screen. Hearing the amount of positive reception it was getting, not just for the performances, but for the action scenes as well, and just how graphic and realistic the war depictions were in the film. Some were comparing it to the scenes from Saving Private Ryan, for example. So right there, I knew we were getting into good territory, and after watching the likes of Braveheart, I knew that Mel Gibson could shoot a great battle scene, um, and he absolutely does in this one. But before I get onto the actual war and battle scenes in this, uh, I need to talk about the performances. So if we kick off with Andrew Garfield playing Desmond Doss, um, our main character of this film, um, he gives such an incredibly moving performance in this film. He really does. You really get that sense of resilience and heroism and perseverance in the character. And what I like about his character in this and his performance is that um, I was expecting just a very clear-cut Paragon character from beginning to end, but there are moments in the film where he does show that vulnerability and crisis of faith, and based on the next movie review I'm going to do, which will be Martin Scorsese's Silence, I guess this is the second film I've seen this year with Andrew Garfield where he does deal with a crisis of faith. Um, I much prefer this movie compared to Silence, but that's a review for another time. Um, I think he's definitely deserving of the Best Actor nomination for this film. Um, there are a lot of scenes where he does show that outpouring of emotion and you just genuinely like the guy. He's such a likeable guy. The upheaval he has to go through with the US military calling him a coward, beating him up. He has to endure so much just to fight for his country. He's, he's fighting his own country almost just to even get on the front lines um, when he goes to the Battle of Okinawa. You kind of even get to the stage where you want a little bit more from his character and I'll get onto that as I move to my negatives in this film because I do have a few mostly down to the shortened running time. Um, but other supporting characters as well, supporting actors. You've got Vince Vaughn, Sam Worthington in it. Actors that are sometimes regarded as very average all give incredible performance in this film and that's testament to Mel Gibson for really getting that quality of performance from all of his actors in the film. Uh, Teresa Palmer as well who plays Dorothy who's the wife of Desmond Doss. Uh, very likeable character and again at the start when their relationship's forming 
it is a very nice relationship, albeit a little bit cheesy at the start. There are some moments where you think this is a little bit too sickly sweet, the little back and forth between them. But um, in the moment, it's believable. And you just like the two characters. You want to see him get with Dorothy. And the two have great chemistry together. They're a really nice pairing. The best performance for me in the movie, without a question of a doubt, is from Hugo Weaving, who plays Desmond's father. Um, he's suffering from PTSD. He's an alcoholic. He served during World War One, And he is still very much dealing with the trauma of that to the point where both of his sons are now going off to fight in World War II. He will do anything to prevent them from going because he has witnessed the kind of horrors that they will experience firsthand. And he knows deep down in his soul that he probably won't see both of his sons again and that's eating him up. Um, there's a lot of moments in this film where he just breaks down crying or will bring up, recall a moment from his life during the war. And Hugo even himself, how they've made him up too with the makeup and hair he looks completely disheveled, you know, he's unshaven, he's scruffy, but you do get all that emotion from the character as well. And there's a few scenes I want to talk about, some of my favourite scenes in the film, but I'm going to save that for spoilers, which do involve Hugo Weaving. But um, he is incredible for the scenes he is in this film. And he's not in it a great deal, but um, the scenes that he's in are absolutely integral to the movie. And I thought he was fantastic. And that's just testament to um, Hugo Weaving. He's one of my favourite actors uh, working in the business today. And sort of going along with these characters as well, um, I really want wanted to see more of these characters. There's a lot of moments in this film where you'll spend a lot of time with characters and then you either won't see them again or it'll be a very fleeting reappearance from them. And I think a lot of that is down to, and I'll get into my negatives now, is to the running time of this movie. It's on for about 2 hours 15, 2 hours 20. And with a film like this, it really needs to be like three hours. And I can't recall off the top of my head how long Mel Gibson's previous films would be. I think definitely Braveheart is closer to the three hour running time. But uh, this felt like it needed to be that three hour epic to really establish these characters to offer closure. I'm not going to get into it with spoilers here, but the ending of this film... Uh, feels very anticlimactic and kind of ends it very abruptly. Um, it doesn't really complete any of the plot threads that were established at the beginning of the film that we expect. We expect to see some characters to come back at the end. We expect to see people return to characters at the start and we don't get any of that. We kind of get filled in with a couple of text things at the end like you get in most biographical films but um, it feels like they either ran out of budget and couldn't finish it off or all of these things were shot but the studio pushed for a shorter running time. Um, maybe I'm wrong on all those accounts and maybe this was actually how it was initially created. Uh, Mel Gibson wanted it to be this short but um, it does feel like you're cheated out of an ending which is a real shame because I thought this was an absolute masterpiece up until the ending because it did feel short. I like my things to be tied up completely, especially when I care for all these characters. Uh, people always complain about Lord of the Rings Return of the King for having too many endings and going on for too long. I love that kind of stuff. I like having a good conclusive ending. And sadly, I don't think this film did. The ending we get is fine, but it doesn't feel just if it feels like we needed a much longer ending to this film. So it did kind of leave me feeling a little bit emotionally hollow at the end, like I was expecting to really feel the power of this movie and just the poignancy of the ending. And as it is, you only kind of get a little bit service level because you are like, oh, the movie's over. I was expecting this to go on for like another 40 minutes or something. So that's really my only negative for the film. Another thing I wanted to get into as well are the war scenes in this film, which are absolutely as good as people have been saying. Um, I don't know if they quite hit the heights of Saving Private Ryan. I think that's always going to be the bar. I think Spielberg set the bar so high for that. But believe me when I say the directing, the staging, the pace, the editing, the sound, everything culminates in these war scenes. And, uh, you know, they build them up just the right amount. You get those scenes that you get in most war films where the troops are marching to the front line and they see returning troops coming back from the front line with just like a look of horror, just like shells of their former selves, um, wagons piled high with the dead. So you really do get that build and that dread building to the point where when they do hit the battlefield and hell just breaks loose, it is almost like entering hell. What I was worried about with this film as well is that the certificate in the UK is a 15 and I was really worried that the level of violence would be curbed somewhat because it hadn't got that 18 rating and I hoped that they wouldn't shy away from that because you really, in a film like this, you absolutely have to show the brutality of war and I was actually kind of shocked as to how much brutality they could get away with with a 15 certificate. 
Um, looking back at Braveheart as well, a lot of the battler scenes in that are quite gory too, and it, it, it hits that 15 certificate, so I guess it's the same with this one. They are very graphic, they are very shocking, and they are very fast-paced. Um, and completely immersive. As I said, the sound, you, it feels like you're on the battle with them. Going back to Mel Gibson, this guy is an incredible director that is so underrated as a director. Um, I genuinely think he's one of the greatest of all time in terms of directing, and he demonstrates that perfectly with this film. I wasn't even sure if Mel Gibson could adapt to a World War II film. It's very different from the ones he's done in the past, um, but he's just proven his directing chops with this film yet again. I can understand this film being incredibly hard to watch for some people that don't deal with gore or war films and the violence of war all that well because it really doesn't pull any punches when it gets to those battle scenes. Another thing I wanted to bring up too is the historical accuracy. Now I had a comment on my reaction for the Hacksaw Ridge official trailer which you can find in the description below. Someone talking about historical accuracy and how this film is very different from the true life events. Um, I believe there's documentaries out there that you can find on Desmond Doss and the whole events leading around this. I haven't seen any of those. I was going to watch one to give myself some research for preparing for the review for this. Uh, sadly didn't have time but it is one that I would very much like to check out. There are a few things. I know that I was reading here on the article that the son of Desmond Doss didn't want them to make a film unless it was completely true to who Desmond Doss was as a person and the actual events that happened. There are a few things that have been tweaked here and there. I I guess that's just to make it more cinematic. For example, the conflict in the movie, how it's edited, how it's constructed, it only feels like they were there for a couple of days, uh, when in fact I think it was actually for a couple of weeks they were there. So there's little bits like that, nothing too major, and I know, for example, Braveheart is one of the most historically inaccurate films there is, and that's where I am with this movie and all films that have a historical setting. I don't need it to be completely historically accurate for my enjoyment. If it's a perfectly constructed film, if it keeps me entertained, if I'm enjoying it, if I'm connected to the characters, then that's all I want. Just give me good characters, give me a good story, and I'm fine. If then I do want to read up the true life events and see how the film differs, I can go watch a documentary, I can go to the library, I can read an article on the internet and read more about it for myself. But in terms of a film, it just needs to capture my mind for the story and the characters, and that's what this movie completely did. Also want to talk about the music as well. It was very interesting. I was listening to this film and the score to this film is great. It's not one I'd probably buy or be able to hum as soon as the movie ends, but uh, the music is great for as you're watching the film and it does match the film completely. And as I'm into my film music as well, I'm very much into my film soundtracks and composers. Um, I was picking up on a unique style and I initially thought it was Harry Gregson Williams who's done music to films such as Kingdom of Heaven and I think he did the Narnia films as well, Chronicles of Narnia, Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Um, I'm familiar with his style and I can usually pick out his scores even just by listening to them and guess before the credits even pop up. Um, I thought it was him, the credits hit, and it turns out it's actually his brother, Rupert Gregson Williams, so I guess they just adopt similar styles with their music. Um, as I said, the soundtrack does match the film. It's not one I'd probably go back and listen to. It doesn't even come close, for example, to the emotional heights of, say, James Horner's soundtrack from Braveheart. I was really hoping for a sweeping, memorable score to this. Sadly, didn't get it although it does work for the movie so if I give my overall recommendation now before moving into spoilers I would absolutely recommend this movie if you haven't seen it already if you follow the Academy Awards and you follow the Oscar movies chances are you've probably already seen this movie if you're a war film fan you definitely have to check this out this is probably one of the best war films that has come out within the last 10 years easily hands down it's some of the best on-screen war action we've ever seen beautifully shot incredibly directed Mel Gibson just completely knows how to get the best performances out of all of his actors. He knows how to shoot a battle scene, he knows how to shoot a movie, and he understands the balance you need to strike between showing all this great spectacle on screen with the battle scenes, but also retaining that level of character too, and bringing those scenes into it so that it feels like a completely emotional experience. As I said, my negative, I do think it ends very abruptly. I think the film could have benefited with at least another 40 minutes. Some of Desmond Doss's comrades along the way, uh, you really only get surface level character. 
um, and you kind of want to see more. You almost want like the opening to Full Metal Jacket. You want that length just establishing all the characters, the commanders, the higher-ups, the hierarchy, and all the people he goes into battle with. But as it is, as it's just over two hours long, you do get very surface level stuff, which is a shame because I would love to see like a three hour plus cut of this movie, giving me a proper ending, giving me conclusions to certain characters and certain plot threads. Uh, but as it is, it's an incredibly solid watch and I would recommend everyone check it out. Definitely to get that cinematic sound and scope of the actual battle scenes on screen. So that'll do it for my spoiler free section. I'm going to get into spoilers now. I haven't got a huge amount to talk about, but there's a few scenes I wanted to go into. Um, some of my favourite scenes in the film. So talking about Hugo Weaving earlier on and how he's my favourite supporting character in this film. There is a scene in this movie that acts as a flashback where we see almost the origin as to why Desmond Doss refuses to use a gun or even pick up a gun. As Hugo Weaving's character in this film is suffering from PTSD, as I said, is an alcoholic. Um, he's also incredibly violent with his wife as well. And you can hear him attacking her in the night. Desmond Doss comes down and his dad's just out of control. He's got a pistol. He's waving it around wildly like he might shoot his wife. Andrew Garfield picks up the gun, aims it at Hugo Weaving and it's almost like he's saying, you know, shoot me, put me out of my misery. I can't live with the grief and the experiences that he's witnessed when he was in World War One. And sort of tying in with that too, there's a great scene where um, one of his sons has already said he's going to war and he expresses at the dinner table that, you know, you're probably not going to come back. I think he, he, he gives an anecdote of some time he was in the war and he starts breaking down in tears. Just all of Hugo Weaving's scenes in this film are great. There's a scene where he's standing at the gravestones of a few of his fallen friends from the conflict in World War One, and he's saying, you know, we all signed up together, we were all enthusiastic to do it, and now they're all gone and I'm here alone. And, you know, he turns to Andrew Garfield, who then says that, you know, he wants to go and fight too. This is something he has to do. This is something he believes in. And this is why I would have loved the payoff scene at the end where, after the war, he goes back home to his wife. That's, again, that's a scene we don't get. And I wanted another scene where he goes and meets his father because his father is ultimately the man who steps up and allows his son to get into the war. He goes into the court hearing where they're refusing to let him into the war. They're calling him a coward. He's about to be court-martialed and his dad comes in and then allows him to go into the war. It's a really nice moment and it's a moment that I wish could have got a great payoff at the end, but sadly we don't get that. Uh, another scene I wanted to talk about is right in the middle of the battle actually, towards the end of it I think. Um, Desmond is having a crisis of faith and you know he's seen all this suffering and destruction and he's saying you know I can't do this this is just an impossible task why have you given up on me God and then when that happens he hears the faint screams of people on the battlefield that still need aid and still need medical attention and you know the score builds up it's all done in slow motion it's a rousing moment and this gives him that motivation and drive to then save however many lives he did he saved an incredible amount of lives I think it was like 75 people he saved um, it's a really nice moment, it's a great cinematic moment, and it definitely does have that Mel Gibson directing stamp on it. And a lot of these films, he loves to use slow motion to really bring that emotion into it and delve into the character. And once you've had the mad frenetic action scene of the war, it's nice to have that calm steadiness before then it goes into the action again. It's a great moment, it's probably one of my favourite scenes in the film, it's one of the best acted moments from Andrew Garfield in the film. Um, it was just a perfect scene and I love that was in there. Again, some people might say it's very cheesy. It is a little bit, but um, I very much enjoyed it. So that brings me on to the ending and I've already said at nauseam how abrupt it is, but basically before he goes off to the war, his wife gives him a Bible and she says, keep this safe. It will remind you of me. And also he's a very religious man, so she said, keep it near to your heart. So I was totally expecting one of these cliched moments where he puts it in like his breast pocket and then gets shot and that everyone thinks he's dead, but like the Bible took the bullet. Like in my head, that's what I thought was gonna happen. Thankfully that didn't happen. And this is why I should never direct movies because I would do something as cliched as that. But he gets caught in a grenade blast and he loses his Bible and one of his friends has to go and fetch it for him. And like the final shot of this movie is them carrying him away on a stretcher um, to get him help. And he's just smiling and he's holding this Bible because he knows that he's done what he's believed in and um, he's achieved that to tremendous success. And then it cuts to real life footage that was recorded uh, before Desmond Doss died in 2006 where he's talking about some of his experiences some of which were shown in the film we get a few text captions as well to what actually happened to him 
And as I said, I would like the story to go on more, even if it went on for like another 20 minutes. Although the action of the wars ended, you want to see that payoff to all the characters. You want to see him go back to his wife. You want to see him go back to his mother and father. You want them to touch on those scenes. And sadly, you don't get them. So you're left guessing as to what happened. And I can't imagine that they wrote it to be this way. This has to be footage that was on the cutting room floor. And I mean, Mel Gibson has done extended cuts before. There was an extended cut for Passion of the Christ, which I think only added about eight to 16 minutes into the film. I haven't seen that cut of the movie. I've only ever seen the theatrical. So hopefully we get one for this, although I think it's very unlikely that we will. Um, for this movie, you need an extended cut along the lines of Kingdom of Heaven, for example. If anyone's seen the ultimate cut of Kingdom of Heaven, you know that that just changes that movie that is a it's a completely different cinema going experience or almost like the lord of the rings extended edition uh it kind of needs that treatment especially with 40 minutes added and i just don't think we're going to get that but um yeah just to give my recommendation again would completely recommend this movie um out of the mel gibson films i've seen with braveheart passion of the christ apocalypto and this it is probably my least favourite one. I do prefer those movies, but that's not a slight against this movie at all. This is still an incredibly well-directed, well-acted movie. You do feel that emotion in it. I think you would have felt more emotion for some of the characters had we have had a longer running time. But as it stands, I'm so glad that this movie gained notice. I'm glad that it's been nominated for six Academy Awards. That's incredible. Um, even if it doesn't win any, and it does have a good chance at winning some of the ones for editing, for example, or sound editing, but it's just a terrific achievement for this film. And just the fact that Mel Gibson's been nominated for Best Director 2 and I hope this is a comeback for him. I'd love to see him make many more movies. 10 years without him directing things is way too long and um, I'm glad he's back and I'm sure he's got some other great movies and stories to tell as well in the future. So that'll do it for my review on Hacksaw Ridge. Be sure to comment, subscribe, let me know what you thought of this movie. Did you like it? Didn't you like it? Did you have any other problems with it? Anything you like please do drop me a comment. In terms of what's coming up on the channel as we are getting closer to Academy Awards season there will be more movie reviews from me. Um, I did take a little bit of a break from them but there's a lot I still need to backdate. I need to do a review for Silence, Live By Night, Lion and all the other Oscar movies too. Uh, rest assured they will all be released before the Oscars. We'll also have a live stream during the Academy Awards. We'll have times upon our Facebook and Twitter pages for those as it gets closer to the time and we know when the live stream's happening. You can find our links to Facebook and Twitter in the description below. We also want you to send in your predictions list too for the Academy Awards. We're going to type up a text document to make it a lot easier but um, if you could send us in your first First and second choices for each category during the Oscars. Whoever gets the most correct will be able to feature in one of our future Battle of the Brackets episodes. So please send those in either in a comment on here, on our Facebook, on our Twitter or to our Gmail. Um, anything like that and we will keep tabs on those during the live stream. Be sure to hit subscribe. It is the best way to keep updated with all of our content and until the next video, whether it's another review for me or another trailer reaction, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.